Hi, I am Mohammad Zishan from India. Currently, I am a junior year undergrad at Indian Institute of Technology, Patna. And today, I will be sharing a thing or two with you about wireless sensing. More specifically, two applications which have gained huge traction in recent years. And they are location tracking based on wireless networks and human activity recognition which will also be based on wireless networks. And the cool thing here is that uh, you may be absolutely unaware of this right now. But as I shall explain in just a few moments, the Wi-Fi routers which are present all around us can actually see and recognize what we are doing. So just a quick overview of this presentation. Uh, I will start with two problems uh, which will explain to you why wireless sensing is needed and how they are better than existing or other methods. Then I will go through how location tracking is done with wireless technologies. And finally, I will briefly go through how human activity recognition is done through wireless uh, Wi-Fi based technologies. So to start with, here's the first problem, location tracking of humans and objects. We all know that today GPS is the one stop solution for most of our large scale navigation and positioning needs. Uh, but here's the catch, GPS based positioning systems are inherently underperforming in underground and indoor environments. Without clear open skies above the user, the location accuracy of GPS based system is worse than 5 meters which effectively means that uh, the position of user which is reported by GPS based systems is off of the actual position by 5 meters or more. As you can also see here, uh, the even in outdoor location, the performance of GPS system reduces a lot near buildings, bridges, trees, etc. So for any and every application which requires accurate positioning inside buildings, malls, underground structures and other similar places, we must come up with some solution which may perform well even in these indoor sort of environments. The next problem is the issue of human activity recognition which is called uh, HAR in short. Uh, and like the previous problems, uh, there are already existing solutions to this problem also. Uh, and they include mostly uh, two types of uh, solutions, vision based and variable sensor based. But the major issues with vision based methods is that they require camera, highly computationally exhaustive processing, major privacy concerns and of course lots of energy because as you can probably see video processing is a heavy task to say the least. And issues with uh, sensors uh, include things like the need to be carrying or wearing some form of hardware modules all the times uh, which may be annoying for uh, many users need for recharging the batteries of these modules, maintenance of these devices, etc. Lucky for us, we can actually achieve 100% device free human activity recognition based on Wi-Fi systems. Now these are the two problems and now we move to their uh, wireless system based solutions. So the first one, uh, location tracking. Uh, most common and accurate location tracking systems that are based on uh, wireless systems uh, use uh, either of these principles signal strength based, time measurements based and angle of arrival based. Uh, to expand upon the signal strength based technologies, they exploit the fact that the strength of received uh, wireless signals decreases as we move away from its source. This is something which anyone who has uh, basically used Wi-Fi uh, must be knowing. The signal strength uh, uh, falls as the distance between transmitter and receiver increases. This is just common sense. So uh, expanding upon this fact, uh, we can actually come up with uh, uh, mathematical relations between signal strength and the distance uh, from the transmitter. And uh, if we use multiple transmitters, uh, then uh, we can uh, find the most likely position of user by applying methods like uh, trilateration. If you don't know what trilateration means, here's a very quick summary of it. So let's say uh, you are here, uh, this arrow is uh, pointing towards your position and uh, let's assume we have three transmitter of uh, wireless uh, signals. What we will do is that we will uh, measure the signal strength due to these three uh, transmitters and uh, check them into this formula uh, of uh, uh, R equals some function of received signal strength and uh, uh, we will obtain three distances which will be radii from the transmitter and based upon this radii we create three circles and where and the position where this circle intersect uh, either intersect or overlap will be the position of the user this is how trilateration works for localization
in simple terms and now moving on to the challenges to this method they include noise in signal strength measurements handling line of sight and non line of sight conditions simultaneously device heterogeneity and etc uh, i won't explain these time and angle based methods uh, partly because uh, they are relatively more complex and mostly because i have limited time here so, so let's just have a look at this very short demonstration of a wifi based localization system in action you can see that as uh, this person will approach a column here and that will be shown in the map also as you can see he is near the column and that's exactly shown in the map also try doing something like this experiment with a gps based system in similar indoor environment and you will realize exactly how much more accurate wifi based indoor positioning systems are so now uh, moving on to uh, human activity recognition this is also something which can be done using wifi signals uh, for localization we use signal strength which is sort of a crude parameter which is just good enough for us to develop localization systems based on it but if we need finer details of wifi signals propagation loss and other parameters we will use a thing called channel state information csi in short uh, it's actually a highly mathematical and abstract matrix of lots of number which won't make much sense at all but uh, a simple analogy to understand it uh, is that of a prism the crude signal strength is like the white light which is fed to a prism it is the amalgamation of many things but we don't know uh, what they are but uh, after it passes through prism we get a spectrum of the finer components of the white light Uh, which actually show what the behavior of white light actually is and this spectrum is actually uh, analogous to csi once proper processing and mathematical treatment of this csi is done we can use it for human activity recognition and here's a really cool demonstration of how this uh, the system based on this can even recognize fine gestures which are made by finger of a person as you can see this lad here is drawing some characters he drew 8 right now in air and the system detected it to be 8 similarly whatever he will draw will be exactly detected by the system this system has actually been made by researchers from NTU Singapore challenges include lots of things like the highly complex and theoretical nature of this technique it is very difficult to obtain csi it, uh, itself difficulty to implement it in real life system etc and uh, so basically that's it thanks a lot for listening and special thanks to paul for giving me this opportunity to present on his channel i hope you got to learn something new here and you hopefully now know uh, how exactly wifi can not only track the location of things but can also see what us humans are doing around it